Ehas Club presents Stories to Create Podcast, where the tale of our guest takes you back, way back to where the story first got created. Now, to help create this new story, here is your host, Cornell Bunting. Uh-huh. Yes, 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 yes. Welcome to another episode of Stories to Create Podcast right here at EAS Club. I'm your host, Cornell Bunton. Ah, it's a beautiful thing I'm telling you guys today. We rolling up, we rolling up. Listen, I'm going to just give you guys a light little teaser of her guest that's coming on the show today. We're going to vibe out. We're going to vibe out. For you guys that's getting a nice little teaser of the show today, because I don't do that for you guys a lot today. And I, listen, hey, I've been traveling a lot, so my apologies. It's okay. Today, you're in for a treat. You're going to get a little teaser, but if you want to hear the whole show, you definitely got to plug in. Uh-oh. He's ready, people. He is ready. He said, let's talk something. He's ready to clear the air. Uh-oh. Listen, without further ado, guys, help me welcome Mr. Zell. Blessings, blessings, blessings. I appreciate you having me on the podcast. Big up stories to create. Yeah, uh, yeah man. Happy yes, to be here. Man. Yes, man. So I know right now we have you. You in a whole different space. So the time is very different right now. <laughs> we got you early up this morning. <laughs> yeah, man. Early bird catches the word. Early bird catches the word. Listen, he's out there in LA, people. So LA is, I think, three hours behind. Yeah. Because we're in, we're in Eastern time. So, but yeah, man, welcome to the show. Respect. Thank you. Yes, man. So, we, you know, we want to jump in a little bit. And, you know, the way the show is structured, you know, what we do is we, we have our guests take our listeners back. To the okay. early years, you know, when the story was first created, mm-hmm. you know, who was this great artist that's coming out and under and, and the rise, under the rise, mm-hmm. we would yeah, say, man. yes. Yeah, man. Um, yeah. And then the upbringings, you know, so where were you born, you know, the upbringings, what was that like? What was that culture like? Yeah, man. So born and raised in Kingston, Jamaica. Well, born in Kingston, Jamaica. Um, Early on, I moved to Portmore uh, with my, my mom and my dad. And yeah. yeah, man, I mean, humble beginnings. We didn't have we didn't have all that much, um, yeah. especially after my mom and dad split up when I was about six years old. I moved back to Kingston. Um, I was living with my mom and my stepfather in in Portville Gardens in Kingston, and you know, um, we just make it work. Um, my mom. She she grew up very poor. She was born in Pinnacle Spanish Town. I don't know if you know about that, but that was that was the first Rastafari settlement in Jamaica. I heard um, about so, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, man. So she grew up in that. Um, so from an early age, um, you know, sometimes we go back to Spanish Town, go back to Pinnacle, and you know, with the another drum circle, um, the man them must smoke weed and I just. You know, them get in the element, you know what I mean? Like yeah. you the drums and it take you to a different place. So yeah. So from an early age, I grew up in that. And you don't know Jamaica, of course, like everybody have music in them blood. You know what I mean? Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. so so just growing up in that, I feel like it was inside of me. And yeah. and yeah, you know, I never I never could afford like lessons and all of those things and never really used to make music that early. But, right, right. But um, as I grow older, actually, we did have like a we did have a um a family friend. She'd have a piano at her house. Whenever yeah. I go over there, no matter like I was what three, four years old, I would just you know you know touch a piano, try yeah, play, start play, to tease them. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Me yeah. and a little lamb like try sound it out and play it by ear. You know what I mean? Yeah. And yeah. that type of thing. And as I got older, eventually my mother got me a guitar. Um, okay. And so be- on, before before yeah. you before you you're going on all of that right okay, here. Okay. Yeah, I yeah, want to yeah. set the tone for the listeners. Yeah, man. So Definitely. am I hearing like your mom was Rastafarian, or she just loved the Rastafarian culture? 
she just she just come from that culture. She wasn't herself, Rasta. She oh, come from yeah. that culture. And oh. and um I mean at the time I, I would have said she was probably Christian, but we never really got church um yeah. so much or anything like that. Sometimes I'd go to church, but not really not right. that much. So I wasn't really I never really grew up in that religious setting like that. So so you said because you said your dad left early. What was that like, you know? having a new guy coming around and all that stuff the adjustment was good or you took a while to adjust to the just to him i mean took a while to adjust to be honest i don't know if i ever adjusted um yeah it it, it i mean you get i got used to it for, for sure okay. after a while i got used to it but that wasn't really the best relationship for my mother um, okay she okay. was basically stuck in that situation for a long time it wasn't yeah. the greatest situation to be in and yeah. Eventually, we got out of that situation. Eventually, we, okay. you know, we left yeah. and, and it was just me and her. Okay, and, okay. And I mean, uh, when I say it was just me and her, like me and her, you know, living together and close, but my dad was still in the picture. Okay, he, okay. He, you know, he, you know, he, you know, picked me up, take me to school, drop me home sometimes. So he okay. was still there. He was still supporting, paying the child support and all of that. So he wasn't absent. You know yeah, I mean? that's good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like yeah. that man. So you know, because a lot of people uh they, when they hear about Kingston and and when you're talking about this time in Kingston, this is in the 80s or in the 90s. Um no man, we're young enough. <laughs> two thousands. <laughs> so in the two thousands. <laughs> 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 Born in the nineties, you know, but but hey. by this time, two thousand. <laughs> yeah, hey, you wanna see how me all up the man? <laughs> <laughs> so early two thousands. Yeah, yeah. Did you know them time there. Yeah, yeah. Jamaica have a vibe them time. I think I was in Jamaica in early two thousand. I think I left. Right. I can't even think of when I left. Oh, I left two thousand. Actually, I left two thousand. I left Jamaica two thousand. So. Mm. Yeah, man, it was it was a nice. Well, ninety eight, ninety nine for me was like the banger in a Jamaica. I was really yeah, young, okay. so yeah, you know, it was it was banging out. So yeah, so basically, when did you decide? Say, you know what, I want something new. I want to transition out of Jamaica. How old were you when you left Jamaica? I was eighteen. I left Jamaica. I went to college um, in the US. Okay. okay. Yeah. Okay, okay. This is good. So, high school, you went to Kingston. You went to high school in Kingston. Yeah. yeah. What, 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 what was that journey like in, in high school? Like leaving up, because Jamaica, primary, then high school. You never really do yeah. the all age thing. Yeah, yeah, no, I never did the all age thing. Okay, yeah, so what, what, what was that like for the listeners to understand a little bit of how the motion of high school flow and all them little things there in Kingston? Yeah, man. I mean, it was a good experience for me, you know. So, so, um, I mean, I don't know how many other listeners know about G Sat and them thing there. By the time it was G Sat, I think it changed now, still, you know. Um, yeah. But you know, it was common entrance, and it was G Sat. My time it was G Sat. Um, so, when I, um, you know, primary school, prep school, um, I was, you know, I was ambitious from from early. Um, yeah. so, you know, I want to go to the best high school and then you know, study hard for the GSAT and then take the exam and then I get into high school and it was a good time. Seven years of high school, first form, straight through to sixth form, um, yeah. you know, very formative years. And um, by the end of the, uh, you know, I had a lot of um, good journeys through that. That's when I really started getting into music, started learning guitar and all of that. Um, have my core group of friends, you know, start a party and them something there. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and, and yeah, I did well in school still. I did well in school. That's you good. know, eventually was able to get into a good college um, mm -hmm. in the U.S. And then um, that's how I really got here in the U.S. and then took it from there. That's beautiful. But, um, on. Yeah, but, I mean, sometimes it was rough because we never, sometimes we never really had a lot of money. So I used to... Yeah. Go high school with no lunch money, nothing to eat, borrow money, can't yeah. really tell people why may I borrow money, can't really tell people, so but just nah, no, you know, like yeah. that kind of thing. Yeah. Um, but but we made it true. We made it true. Yeah. Like yeah. you know, go through ups and downs, go through struggles, but we made yeah. it true. 
you understand the struggles. I I like that, man. I like that. And I, you know, I think uh so you know, with you coming here, did you feel like you were you were prepared for 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 what you were walking into here in America like the culture, you know, the different groups of people that you would be around? Uh because when mm -hmm. you came, you came, you went straight to California. Actually, I went to Vermont first, way up in the north. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> up in <laughs> the cool. cool. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, man. Oh um, man. That that <laughs> that you had to adjust to, innit? With the that that was definitely an adjustment. That that was crazy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, so 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 college. Mm -hmm. What what would you say were like you know, some of the, the, the eye-opening um, pieces for you in college, you know, going going into a state where you're experiencing snow and all them things there, and then you have to make sure, say, I understand the semester, how it flew and all that. Yeah, yeah. Um, I would say I was prepared for a lot of things mentally because, you know, I'm an I'm a adventurous person. I know I like to explore. I like to get out of my comfort zone, ex experience new things. So, yeah. I was ready to just take in all of the new things, right? So okay, in that okay. sense, I was kind of ready for it. But in other senses, like a lot was new to me, right? Um, yeah, yeah. You know the 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 culture and and get the, yeah the the cold the cold was a, definitely an adjustment. But I made the best of it, like learn to ski and that sort that sort of thing. Um, but sometimes it gets brutal. You just stay inside. You, you know, you, you you learn to adjust. What I didn't realize. Yeah, there's this thing called um, seasonal affective disorder. I don't remember something like that. But basically, when it's snowing so much and the sun is blocked, it affects your mood. You get yeah. you get sad. You know, you get <laughs> down. <laughs> so so you had a few of them moments. A few of them moments, yeah, man. That was one thing I had to adjust to. Um, oh, oh man, and coming to the US, the culture is different, right? Like, yeah, yeah, it's less. Like Jamaica have a vibe. Jamaica like people kind of look more free in the sense of how they think they speak freely. Them just um, you know, there's an understanding. Like in the US, I feel like there is a push to be a little more politically correct in the mm -hmm. way you speak, um, mm -hmm. especially in environments that are, you know, more liberal, like that mm -hmm. kind of thing. Politically yeah. correct and so that was a bit of an adjustment, all the racial tensions and stuff that are in here in the US. Even though yeah. we have some of that in Jamaica with the colorism and things, sure. Right. Different right. here, you know what I mean? Yeah. So those yeah. things I definitely had to adjust to. Yeah. Um, well, at, at least you understood colorism before you got here. So it wasn't, yeah. you could kind of have some of those conversations. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How was... How was the friends like? You know, you gaining friends, and you know, being in that because you're a Gen Z, yes. Not even know. Ninety six, my boy. So what? Okay, that? okay, <laughs> okay. Uh, it's possible. Yeah. I think it's possible. I'm not. Okay. I'm not sure the flow, but yeah, it it's it's a lot of argument now with how this newer generation look at life and yeah you know movements and what makes sense and what to make so much sense i mean right. and in in your eyes and your perspective like with you know uh seeing how a lot of others have done it mm -hmm. before mm -hmm. with what's facing you now like you know going into this industry that you're going into Mm -hmm. uh, you feel like you have a lot of obstacles or you understand the task at that? I mean, obstacles will always be there, right? Obstacles yeah. that, you know, that's not a problem. That's meant to be overcome. Right. So, right. so um, I don't look at obstacles as, you know, uh, uh, something in the way. Right. I look at, uh, there's a book called Obstacle is the Way. Yeah. So. So, you know, the obstacle be you know, overcoming the obstacles and learning through that, that is the journey. I so like that. 
So I would say in that sense, I feel like I understand the task at hand. It's up to me. I'm the only person, you know, that could be in my way. Good, good, good. I I like that. And I hope you guys hear that when I'm just say a while ago, because, you know, a lot of you guys don't necessarily understand that we are Mm -hmm. the blockage a lot of time with with everything that goes on in life. Depends on how life presents certain things to Mm -hmm. us. Mm -hmm. You know, so for you, like, you know, getting out of college, you know, now you're in the real world understanding the flow of things, you know, Mm -hmm. possibly going back to Jamaica or staying. How was your feeling? Like, what, what did you feel like was best for you to do? So, um, I felt like it was best for me to be in the U.S. at least for a while. Um, Yeah. You know, the opportunities are bigger. Yeah. The, the, you know, the network of people are bigger. Um, so, I mean, yeah, I felt like, I felt like, you know, to be able to take advantage of this. Um, if it's even, you know, just being able to be in two different places, because it don't right. matter, like, two more than one, right? Like, yeah. so instead yeah. of going back to Jamaica and just only being existing in one place, right. I could establish myself here and have two places that I can kind of build a network in and build a career. In. So that was my um, approach to it. Um, and yeah, it was, a, it was, there was, some, there was, a, it was a journey there because I had actually taken two years off college. I went back to Jamaica. Um, that's when I started taking the music thing more seriously. I was playing in that reggae band and I was, that's when I released my first track. Okay. And then, then at that point I realized, yeah, man, I want to go back to the US and and you know and earn pursue. some money and pursue, yeah. you know, build my career. And so I, I went back to college, finished up, and I came out to California. That's beautiful. Um, who would you say was your first inspiration for you to wanting to do this music thing? Oh wow, that's a boy, that, that question. I don't I don't even know. First inspiration. Um I mean, I don't know. I just remember growing up watching music videos on TV, right? Listening to 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 the music. Um, you know, Sunday morning, my mother blasts like old oh, Whitney Houston and that sort of thing around the oh, house. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> or or I'd watch Michael Jackson videos, you know, with him yeah. dancing and singing. I was always, you know, drawn in by that or or you know, watch BT and see. See Usher music videos, you know, you don't have to call. <laughs> it's okay, girl. Yeah, and you just yeah. stand and dance and you imagine yourself in that situation. So that was how I really, you know, wanted um that lifestyle. Oh, I love that. I love that. Yeah. And and the 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 vocals, because these people you're naming, their vocals are in CNN. Oh, so. oh yes, yes. <laughs> Yes, definitely. Now, you you going back to Jamaica and performing with a reggae band, what was that experience? That was a great, great experience. A um, lot of growth, a lot of growth. Yeah. Um, you know, I went back and I really went back because I was having a tough time mentally, right? Yeah. And I just needed to, to you know, figure, figure out, you know, what's going on with me mentally and how to be happy and, you know, what I want to do with my life kind of thing. Um, and, you know, eventually I was there for a while, you know, trying to figure out everything. Eventually I realized I need to start getting myself out there, trying to figure out if I could, let's say I never went back to college. If Could I survive on my own? Could I make money? Could I pursue these things? Right. Um, and I remember some advice um, that a friend gave me I had a friend in college. So I I was actually a computer science major. Um okay. used to do computer programming and that sort of thing. And yeah. his friend, he used to he used to make a lot of money doing programming for people. And I was like, oh, you get all these opportunities. He said just be visible, right? Yeah. Like go in, yeah. he would go in the cafeteria just with his computer with code open. And not probably not even doing anything, but people see him with code open and computer people come to him, right? So yeah. I was like, all right. Be visible. I used to walk around Kingston with my guitar and my amp, go in cafe, you know, drink some, sit down, drink some coffee with my computer open, 
and you know, doing some coding, but with my guitar and everything, walk, start doing some guitar lessons, walk. I don't know if you know Hope Road, walk that whole yes, switch of Hope Road with my yes. big amp and guitar and, you know, we just like, <laughs> yeah, you know, till people, random people, you know, who see me regular start calling me fireman for amplifier. You know, okay, come on, always okay. have this amplifier. Yeah. Come on, fireman. Yeah. And then I r- ran into a brother named Manny, um, yeah. who just, you know, came up, you just bump into him in the street, never know him, see me with a guitar and I'm, him say, you want, you know, I'm starting up this band, you want to come do a little audition yeah, and whatever. And I say, yeah, you know, yeah. just grab the opportunity. So, you know, me and a bridge and go to, to, to them play. So, you know, we just vibes, just jam, just jam yeah. with the music and everything. And then that was how that kicked off. Um, yeah. Yeah. And start a band called Manin and the Means. We play around the place and I was playing for different people too at that time. Cause we meet people during that guitar right. uh, talking. So, um, yeah, that was fun. That was fun. That was really that's, fun. That's good, yeah. man. So you got back in the US, uh, finished college. What is everything looking like now with you pursuing this career as a solo artist? And... Mm-hmm. Yeah, man. Um, it's a journey. It's a journey for sure. Um, right now, I, you know, I'm doing music. I mostly do everything myself. Um, yeah. I have a home studio. I produce, uh, you know, mix and master my tracks. I'm starting to work with some other people now. Um, you know, I live around the corner from a great, you know, studio and rehearsal space. So link up with those guys. Um, and, you know, I'm there a lot. So right now we're kind of grassroots in it, you know, you know, yeah. self-funded, independent. Um, yeah. And you know, playing gigs around the place, making some music, and you know, we're just we're just having fun. I mean, I feel like for me, I'm in the development stage yeah. where I'm, I'm growing, but you know, it's all a big learning experience for me, and making great music and just enjoying the process. No, uh, so the the full name is Zeal Young, but you just use Zeal. Yeah, exactly. Okay, yeah. I, I I like that man. Um. In the nowadays reggae, because mm-hmm. you know, you here with with you know pursuing this career, do you consider yourself uh because you know in Jamaica they have the sing J, the DJ, the reggae mm-hmm. artist? <laughs> where, where do you put your yourself? Yeah, I would say in that um kind of thing, I'm I'm probably a sing J. Um okay. but my I do when people ask me what genre I do. It's hard for me to answer because oh. I do a, a broad um, range of genres. I do some reggae. I do, you know, Afrobeats style. I do some smooth, like R&B style. Um, I just kind of blend all of the different music that I like into yeah. one. And that's what I do. I like that. So if you was to pick your top three Afrobeat artists, who would those be? Sheesh. Um, all right, let me think, let me think. Um, I've been listening to Thames a lot. Okay. Um, um, uh, there's a Nigerian artist named Omale. Yeah, man. Yeah. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. Omale. Okay. And, okay. you know, I'll just, I'll just say Burner Boy as well. Burn okay. Burner Boy. Boy. I like Burner <laughs> Boy. I like Burner Boy. Yeah, man. Now, take it to Jamaica. Not the yeah. DJ of them, but reggae artists. Who would be your yeah. top three reggae artists? Top three reggae artists. Um, from a taller time, I was always a fan of Sizzler, Sizzler Kalanji. Okay, yeah. okay. I grew up yeah. listening to Sizzler. So yeah. definitely up there. Um, let me think. Um, you know, I mean, yeah, more modern, I would say Chronics, Chronics yeah. and Proto J. I listen to them a lot. Okay, yeah. okay. Yeah. So, you know, with Buju Bantan coming back in the mix, you know, you know, listen, uh, you listen to some of his stuff as well? Yeah, man, I listen to some of his stuff. And I've been watching videos of his live performances because I think he's on tour right now. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, and, and yeah, I've been really enjoying that. I, you know, I want to see if I can go to a show. Uh, yeah, Buju is yeah. the OG for real. Him, yeah, man. You know, very talented, very, very talented. Him, him sell out show, him sell out show. 
Of course. And, and of course, right. so. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> with how the dance hall has been going right now, and I don't know if you're thinking of putting out something in that space. Mm. How do you feel about what that look like? Because, I mean, Vibes Cartel is back out now, so I don't know what that all look like. <laughs> But you, be, yeah. there's been a lot of the younger artists been doing so a great job. The Skeng and the Alkaline yeah. and all them them guys. What? Yeah. What's your take? Yeah, man. Um, I like it. I like. I like. I like where dance artists. A lot of people, you know, don't like it. They resist it. Um, I mean, I don't know. You know, some people have lots of problems with you know the scamming music and the the the, the buzzo type. Music. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, but I mean, you know, is 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 life. People talk about them life, right? Yeah, um, yeah. Has always been the case. Uh, yeah. yeah, you can you you know you can argue that the content of it is is not you know the best, but people talk about them life. And I like the sound. I like the sound that I hear coming out. A lot of yeah. it have a vibe. Um, Armani, yeah, them Monday have a vibe. Um, so I've been th- yeah I've been thinking about you know. I've actually voiced some songs, um, you know, in that style, dance more dance style style. So, right. yeah, I'll definitely put out some of that. Um, so, so we have, you know, Jim, you know, Jamaica have like this pattern, you know, with when it comes to certain dance hall rhythm, they mm-hmm. have anywhere from five to eight different artists on it. That's is that yeah. something that you would want to be in the mix of as well? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, definitely. Um, Matter of fact, uh, my latest track, Journey, um, I don't think you have that one in the YouTube link, but um, it's on yeah. Spotify and Apple Music and all of that. Um, yeah, yeah, Journey. That that beat was a beat by a producer named Sonovich. Um, oh, cool. And it was a bunch of like more reggae-style artists that, that voice on that rhythm. Um, you have man like Runkus, uh, I think, just, no, Habaka Pyramid, I think, um, Royal Blue, um, Actually, I think um, Chronic Law of Voice on it too. Yeah, so so I hopped on that, and okay. that was fun. Uh, we definitely want to do more of that. Definitely want to yeah, do more. yeah, that 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 definitely have a vibes. Uh, yeah. with with you know reggae, dancehall, and all these breaking into the American market now. Mm-hmm. You know, people are familiar with it. Um, we had a little uproar. I want to say two years back when uh, a, a reggae band from California won the Grammy. Um, mm-hmm. and they were like, it's all white guys. What, right. how, did you, how did you feel about that? <laughs> um, I probably felt a similar way in the sense that, uh, you know, if somebody is winning a reggae um, award, that, that sh- you know, we're, we're the Jamaicans in the mix. Like, why, you know, are they not getting recognized? In that right. sense, right. Um, um, so so I, I did feel a way about it, but at the same time, like I mean, it is what it is in terms of like you know this is this is an American organization, right? The Grammy, right? Um, yeah. right. right. So so naturally, they do gravitate towards you know people who are more in that network, um, yeah. um, and it's not like it's not like. You know, I think it was Soldier, right? That one, that one, that I don't remember yeah, yeah. who. who yeah. yeah, okay. Yeah, um, yeah. yeah. Um, it's not like they're bad. Like they're they're good. They're they're yeah. good musicians, and I've heard, I've heard about their work ethic. They work, you know, you know, hard. And I yeah. feel like in the um, a lot of Jamaicans are missing that aspect of it. The yeah. the music business aspect of it. Right. The, the the scale that a lot of um american musicians have been able to yeah. achieve that scale right. uh you know jamaicans i feel like are catching up to that right now but yeah. we're getting there for sure like we're getting yeah. more recognition so i'm happy with, with where it's going but i feel like that that you know level of scale we still yeah. have to grow in that area i think that's, that's why it. those things like that happen that's beautiful. If you was to choose between Chronics <laughs> and Prodigy, who would you choose? Ah, uh, man. That's crazy. Um, let me think. 
Oh man, that's yeah. They said I want the hard. Yeah, that one the tough. <laughs> <laughs> that one, that one the tough. That one the tough. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if I can answer that. Okay. Uh, that's all right. So if, if we go back a little bit in you know, the dance hall part, elephant man. Mm. Mm-hmm. I try to pick a good one where, where could I really compete upon female energy. Capitan. Mm. <laughs> Yo. <laughs> um, yeah, that tough. Step. I would have choose. Uh, <laughs> I would say Elephant Man just be, like, I used just because I used to listen more to Elephant Man. And okay. Okay. we used to run the dance then, right? So I mean, yeah. we love dance too. So yeah. that's why. Yeah. All right, that's fair. That's fair. That's yeah. good. You know, a lot of people definitely um crazy with the fireman thing too. So I like <laughs> yeah. I like Elephant. I did I did a few shows with him. So okay, that's great. Yeah, man, definitely love the energy and all these different things. Mm-hmm. For you, when it comes to opportunity and different shows, working with certain artists. And your future list, who, who would you love to, to work with at, on a show or on a collaboration? All right. Um, first person that popped into my head was Sean Paul, actually. Um, okay. Yeah. He was one of the, like, dancehall artists that, that um, even though, you know, he's a different type of dancehall. He's more, yeah, um, yeah. yeah. Inter- international. Crossover, yeah, yeah. Yeah, crossover, pop. Yeah, yeah. So, um because of that because of that i grew yeah i grew up listening to sean paul so i was a big fan of sean paul um when i was younger and you know you know seeing a jamaican artist reach you know into the the pop spaces that was really cool for me to see so yeah sean paul is, is on that I, I like that i like that and sean paul pretty big big yeah, in man. the pop, pop right now so yeah man that's a beautiful thing. When when you write a piece, like mm-hmm. what what is the 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 layout? How how you put a full piece together? Like how long does that take you? Um, depends. You know, I've written entire songs in one day, written and recorded entire songs in one day. Um, sometimes it takes me months or, or, okay. or weeks. Um, usually, so I mean, I'm always writing lyrics, whether right. I'm freestyling, um, and I just, you know, come up with something good and I jot it down, or, yeah. you know, I just sit on you know, the you know, backyard, I just write things. So I'm always writing lyrics that eventually might make it into songs. Yeah, right, right. Um, but a lot of the time, when I come to create a song, most of the time I start with the music. So whether um, I sit down with my guitar, and I come up with some chords or I open up Ableton because I produce in Ableton. I open up Ableton and, you know, use my MIDI control and make some, you know, whatever beats I come up with. I make a rhythm, make a, um, you know, instrumental, stuff like that. And then usually the instrumental, when you hear it, words start to come out, like a feeling, a vibe starts to come out. Um, so that's yeah. usually how I end up writing. And, you know, I will, if I'm, if I'm, it depends if I'm just exploring or if I'm, you know, trying to have a mission to write a song. Yeah. So if I have a mission to write a song, I will, you know, sit down for hours listening to the instrumental over and over and just writing lyrics or freestyling over it and see what comes out. So that's that's my process. Um, yeah. So tell us a little bit about Sunday. All right. So, yeah, man, Sunday. Um, that was an interesting time because at the time I was doing, I was making... Um, a song per week. So I think Sunday was, I'm not even sure which number, second or the third one. Okay. Um, and yeah, I was just, you know, forming more of my sound and everything. I was into the Afrobeat, so I wanted to make something a little resembling that. And at the time, I was also traveling a lot. Okay. Um, so I had this idea in my mind, like, you know, talking to a girl or something, I just saying, you know, tell me where you want to go. We leave on Sunday. So that line was just, <laughs> that oh, line cool. was in my head. So that's yes. how that song started. And it's just an exploration of, 
freedom and traveling and you know that love connection with somebody um so that's the message in sunday that uh, that's a beautiful um piece right there man um appreciate that when when it when it come to know you know relationships and all these different things mm. uh, you feel it's more it's more challenging or people don't communicate as much or how, what's your take yeah um yeah, communication is a big thing. I feel like I feel like uh, a lot of people don't communicate um, at a certain level that they need to. Um, yeah. yeah, most most relationship problems stem from either a lack of communication or a mis uh, miscommunication or or different communication styles, right? And yeah, that sort of thing. And I've had trouble with that in the past. Like I'm trying not to hurt somebody or hurt somebody's feelings. So I, I don't say certain things like or keep things in. And that ends up being worse on the relationship. You know what I mean? So right, right. So um yeah, in this time of my life I feel like I'm trying to just be oh be more open, be com- communicating more and all of right. that. Right. Um so yeah, but relationships are important. You know, everybody needs friendships, everybody needs love. Everybody, yeah, you know, that sort of thing. So um yeah, we just kind of have to work through it. The the one of the fear, well, I don't know if it's a fear, but it's a thing for artists and, and mm. females always said this that you know it's hard for them to get in a relationship with an artist because they always have all these different females coming after them or <laughs> whatever that look like. You ever have them type of conversations where you talking to a young lady and she say, hey, I'm going a, I'm to a, I'm a stand back for a minute because you might have a lot of girls on your, you know. <laughs> um, you know, I haven't really had that. No, I haven't, I haven't really had anybody, you know, okay. say anything like that. Usually... I feel like, um, at least, you know, in, here in the circles, I mean, I feel like people are, you know, more interested because, you know, you're a creative person and you, you do all these things. I feel like people, people like that. Um, yeah. Yeah. So I haven't really had that yet. Maybe I just don't reach those levels. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so maybe soon, but. <laughs> no, uh, when it comes to getting on shows and, moving around um are you doing anything international yet like outside in europe africa any of those places yet or are you interested in doing anything in those years definitely interested um i played a show in germany uh, a couple of years ago and i might be playing one um next month in september still working it out to see to see if it's gonna happen um but because I have some links in Germany, so so that's the country. That's that's where I've um, had a you know couple opportunities. Okay. But that's really the only place international that I have um, okay. performed so far, and I would love to definitely do more of that. That's beautiful, man. With um with upcoming artists right now like yourself, mm-hmm. uh, someone that hasn't get to the level that you're at right now, and you know still mm-hmm. considering if if it's a good idea or not. What encouragement would you give to them? Um, first of all, I mean, I would say like decide what's in your heart, you know what I mean? Because like any like anything is possible. Like there are eight billion people in the world, there, there, there are tons of opportunities, right? Um, yeah. you know, if you know how to find them. And of course, different people are in different tough situations. So right. I can't discount that. But yeah. um, yeah, first of all, if it's in your heart. There's a way, you know them say where there's a will, there's a way. There's and a so way. um if you have that will, feed it. Find yeah. more people around you. Cause you know, like it's about your community too and who you hang out with. And are these people also, you know, have that drive trying to be creative and trying to find creative ways to make their dreams happen and that sort of thing. Find that right. community, find the people that, you know, that you can grow with um yeah. right so so that's what i would say because relationships are really what make things happen right everything is about relationships so you want you want to build those a lot so right now we have we have a few things happening right now in in different parts of america mm-hmm. uh between different groups um mm-hmm. there's been a lot of talks on 
cancel culture. What's your take? The light version. You don't even have to go in too deep because I know these things they get sensitive yeah. a little bit. Yeah, they get they get sensitive. Um, yeah, I don't. I, I'm not a fan of the cancel culture. I'm not a yeah. fan of it. Um, that's that's one of the things I was talking about earlier when I was saying, you know, Jamaica is different. We don't we don't we don't have that. People are more, you know, there's a more of an understanding. There's more of a um, people, you know, can say things without everybody getting, you know, so political and so offended. People right. get offended for sure, but then just cuss you and then go go on about them, you know, <laughs> whatever yeah. I do, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, so I feel like in you know I feel like in these times there's little room for disagreement. Right. Once right. you disagree with somebody a little bit, it gets too political, and that that's the problem I have with it. Yeah, yeah. I I, I can agree with that, and I think a lot of people is in that same um, boat right there when it comes to uh, what that look like. You know, with yeah. with uh, the relationship between artists in Jamaica and artists here, uh, you think there's more opportunities for, you know, artists that are in that reggae category having relationships here with, you know, artists here in the hip hop, R and B. You I think it's breaking out more and better now? Yeah man, for sure. I do. I do. I think it's breaking out more for sure. Lots of upcoming artists right now. You know, so them and travel back and forth, come to LA, you know, yeah. you know, them in a Jamaica, but them, you know, them have these opportunities, them, them making these links and connections because I think the internet is a big the social media, as much yeah. as it has its problems, it it's a big way that people have been connected, right? Right. So right. So it, it helps, it helps with that for sure. And yeah, people get more exposure via the social media. And yeah. Yeah, there's more of an international game to play now. So I think Jamaicans are are getting there. And I like I, it. I, I like that, man. You you mentioned social media for everyone that is curious about who you are and all that. What are your plugins? Of course. Um, so so Zale himself, that's Z A L E H I M S E L F. Zale himself on Instagram, Facebook, TikTok. Um all the platforms, Twitter, all those platforms. So you can find me at Zale himself. Okay, I I like that, yeah, Mr. Zale, man. This this has been beautiful, man. And uh, you know, uh, if, before we jump out the show, uh, mm -hmm. you definitely have to let us know, man. You you still have a good relationship with your mom. Oh, one hundred percent, yeah, man. That's, yeah, man. That's beautiful, 100%. man. And you know, we have to ask this, you know, because with Jamaican and people love with food, I had. You know, you know to cook some of those good food down there. <laughs> of course, of course. Yeah, man. <laughs> I have to show the people the good stuff because they don't know. <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah, man. This is good. <laughs> Listen, man. It was really beautiful having you on the show, man. Um, you know, Thank kind you. of getting an opportunity to talk about various parts of your life and them things. So, yeah. Uh, Listen, it was it was a pleasure having you on the show. Yeah, it was a pleasure to be here. Yeah, man. When we run into each other, if I'm out there in LA, we get you on yeah, the show live so, so people can see the vibe more, yeah? Of course, of course. Looking My brother, it was great talking with you. Likewise. And listen, guys, there you have it. Another great episode right here at EAS Club until our next episode where we have another decorative guest, talented guest, like my brother here, Zale. Uh, we thank you for tuning in. Yeah, man, right. Much love. Much love. Yes, man. Yes, man. That was that was beautiful, my brother. We um as I like I said, um, we will Well, there you have it. The host came, the guest came, and the story was created. Thank you to our sponsors, Ehas Inc., Karis Capital and the Cornell Bunting LLC brand. Go check out the books, courses, and materials at www.cornellbunting.com. Thank you again for listening to the show. Check back again to hear another tale from another unique guest right here at EHAS Club. <laughs>